Linear regression. This is a central topic in many fields of mathematics, including statistics, linear algebra, and machine learning. You are given some points in 2D space, and you want to find the line that best fits all of the points. This best fit line is called the regression line. The slope of this regression line, beta, is given by this seemingly complicated formula. This formula seems intimidating, but it actually has a very nice geometric interpretation. My goal in this video is to give an intuitive understanding of what it represents. Before we begin, let's remind ourselves of the setup again. We have some pairs of numbers, which we visualize as points on the x-y coordinate plane. The x is called the independent variable, and the y is called the dependent variable. Here, we only have one independent variable, x, so this problem is referred to as simple linear regression. A quick side note here, when we have more than one independent variables, it will be a multiple regression problem, which will be the topic of the next chapter. Anyway, we assume that the two variables have a linear relationship. That is, as x increases, y also increases with it linearly. This linear relationship is given by the equation y equals beta x plus beta naught, where beta is the slope and beta naught is the y-intercept. We put a hat on the beta and the beta naught since there can be some error in the data, and we can only give estimates of these parameters. In other words, we don't know the true values of beta and beta naught. We can only give our best guesses at them based on all the limited data we have. Likewise, we put a hat on the y since at any given input, x, we are only given an estimate of the corresponding output, y, and that estimate might not be correct. The slope beta hat is calculated using this formula. Beta hat equals the sum over all xi minus x bar times yi minus y bar divided by the sum of all xi minus x bar squared. Ooh, that's a mouthful. To understand it intuitively, let's draw a vertical line, x equals x bar where x bar is the average value of all the x coordinates, and a horizontal line, y equals y bar, where y bar is the average value of all the y coordinates. Let's consider this point, x1, y1. The distance between this point and the line x equals x bar is x1 minus x bar. Likewise, its distance to the line y equals y bar is y1 minus y bar. Now, these four lines form a rectangle. And the area of this rectangle is given by x1 minus x bar times y1 minus y bar. If we do this for all of the data points, forming rectangles with a centroid and adding up the areas, the total area of all these rectangles will be exactly equal to the numerator. Keep this in mind for a second, because now we're going to tackle the term in the denominator. Let's first draw a line y equals x and then project every point vertically onto that line. This way, each point will have coordinates xi, xi, and the average value of all the y coordinates will be x bar, shown here on the line y equals x bar. Same as before, we consider all the rectangles formed with a centroid and the sum of their areas. Except this time, these shapes are not only rectangles, but they are also squares, with side length xi minus x bar. The sum of their areas is equal to the denominator, the sum of all xi minus x bar squared. Indeed, we see that beta hat is given by the ratio between the sum of rectangle areas and the sum of square areas. Isn't that cool? If we restore the points to their original positions, notice that the sum of rectangle areas is a bit smaller than the sum of all the square areas. This means that their ratio which gives beta hat is a number between 0 and 1. Visually, we see that the slope of the regression line is rather flat. In contrast, if the y coordinates of the points are more spread out, then the rectangle areas will be greater than the square areas. As a result, beta hat is greater than 1 and the regression line gets steeper. Also, it is possible for the regression line to have a downward slope, which implies that beta hat is negative. If the points are living in the top left quadrant of the center point, or the bottom right quadrant, then 
you will be adding up the quote-unquote negative areas of the rectangles. Of course, when you divide by the sum of square areas, that value will always be positive, as the squares always live in the positive quadrants. And finally, once we know beta hat, we can calculate the y-intercept beta not hat, because the regression line is guaranteed to pass through the centroid, x bar, y bar. So there you have it, a beautiful way to visualize the formula for simple linear regression. And by the way, this sum of rectangle areas is connected to an important measurement in statistics. If you divide it by m minus 1, you will get the covariance between x and y. Also, for the sum of areas of the squares, dividing it by m minus 1 will give you the variance of x. If you are curious about why we divide by m minus 1 instead of n, there is a quiz on brilliant.org that you can check out, the m minus 1 mystery. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in chapter 2.